Hello, we're at the Wallace Collection in London, where, once again, Joan and I march forward in the name of art. And in today's heats, we have among our artists a watercolorist, a printmaker, and someone whose self-portrait is just this size. Wow. She could paint her own passport picture. <laughs> um, yes, guess what? It's Sky Art's Portrait Artist of the Year. The Wallace Collection is home to this year's heats and today hosts nine new artists doing what they enjoy most. There's nothing else like it. It's paint. They'll have just four hours to capture three celebrity sitters. I want them to look like a still out of a film. And produce a piece of work strong enough to impress our judges. Independent curator Kathleen Soriano, award-winning artist Ty Shan Schirenberg, and art historian. Kate Bryan. You're going to get every second out of this, I, I can will. see. <laughs> Within their grasp is a life-changing prize, the chance of a £10,000 commission to paint the portrait of Graham Norton for the permanent collection of the National Gallery of Ireland. Nobody seems 100% confident, but that's just artists, isn't it? So who will be able to pace themselves? You could continue painting until, until you die. And produce a masterpiece worthy of a place in the semi-final. It looks a bit like a little Leonardo drawing. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it really, really does. We have nine artists taking part in today's heat, four of whom are amateur. Stephen Tew, Callie Ann Healy, Liam Dickinson, and Ross McCauley. I didn't sleep very well, no. <laughs> uh, I went to bed specifically early to, you know, prepare. Got to be rested, got to be bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. But uh, lots of tossing and turning, I think. It is quite, it quite nerve-wracking. And the other five are professional artists. Claire Falconer, David O'Malley, Leah Nagardo, David Caldwell, and Connor Walton. I know I can do it, but I don't know that I will do it. <laughs> so much stuff. While the art is set up, the judges view the self-portraits they submitted to enter. Although they've seen a digital version, seeing the real thing offers new insights to today's artists. I don't think people realise how significant these paintings are. Am I right? Yeah, it's yeah. crucial because this is what they really believe themselves to be as an artist. This is them sort of well-dressed with best foot forward, here I am. Yes. This is like a sort of uh, 18th century etching, both in, in, in the feel of the marks made, but also in the pose. He could be suffering from tuberculosis and he's in an opera, mm. if you know what I mean. Yeah. Perfect. And it's great, it's got a lot of texture in it too. You know, it gives it a lot of character, doesn't yeah, it, absolutely. I think? I love this painting because it really transports you to this time and place. You know, the portrait of the artist as a young man wrestling with himself, maybe in a cafe, you know, just enough money to buy a cup of coffee. It's really evocative. Fantastic palette, lovely use of colour that gets the eye bouncing around the picture and then honing straight in to this head that sort of shouts character at you. Now, never have we had such a submission as this. So we can see it's less than hand size. It's a miniature. I also like the idea that the artist has put it on this block, it becomes a little yeah. object and sort of intrudes into our space. And also the idea that it's a miniature, but she still put herself to the side in a, mm. sort of a, as a compositional device. I really hope we get something minuscule like this today. It would be great. And the last of the self-portraits. We just struck us for its youthful idea of composition. It's outdoors at night in a busy city. I mean, it's a, it's a painting about light, really, isn't yeah. it? There's all different kinds of light, the electric light, the natural light on his face. And that fantastic sharp focus in the foreground mm -hmm. and sort of haziness in the background, that's what gives it that sort of filmic quality. Yeah. I brought my 
own personal shop today. Inks, oils, acrylics, charcoal, graffiti, some of my daughter's finger paints as well. I brought all my brushes. Well, not all of them, but most of them. Some of them uh, <laughs> go back to my days of art college. David O'Malley is a professional artist from Lancashire. His self-portrait is one of a series of paintings exploring his interest in space science. Since graduating in fine art from Teesside University, he's worked on a range of creative projects such as acting and design, but spends most of his time painting. This is going to be a very strange exercise, the fact that I've got four hours. I've been doing some paintings of various celebrities and I'm ready for any game really today. But who are today's surprise sitters? Artist, your sitter today has lived a varied life. He worked in a steelworks, he was a makeup artist, and now he's a hairy biker. <laughs> Forget the oils and the acrylics today, it's all about gasoline and gravy. Please welcome the fabulous Dave Myers. Hello. The envy of anyone who loves food and travel, Dave's role as one half of the Hairy Bikers duo means he gets to entertain audiences while in pursuit of his passions. Hello, Frank. Dave. Now, you were an artist yourself, Dave. Yeah, I trained, I got a degree in fine art from Goldsmiths in the late 1970s. And do you still paint now? No, I'm rubbish. I'm much better with a plate. Okay. <laughs> Artists, your sitter is a musician who's a master of the keyboard and he's collaborated with people like David Bowie, T-Rex and Cat Stevens. Please welcome Rick Wakeman. Finding fame with the 1970s band Yes, Rick went on to sell more than 50 million albums and continues to juggle a busy schedule of composing, touring and recording in the studio. You've had portraits done before, presumably. I've had a couple done before, yes. My piano teacher, who I was with for uh, nearly 15 years before I went to, to college, the first thing she ever said to me was, remember, as a musician, you're a painter. You paint colours. And I've always felt that art and music go so closely together. Artists, your sitter today has had a very, very successful music career. More importantly, she has the most exquisitely beautiful voice. Please welcome Katie Kassoon. <laughs> Katie has sung alongside such musical giants as Eric Clapton, Elton John, George Michael and Robbie Williams, bringing the magic ingredient to over 30 years of live performances. <laughs> Katie, what a joy. Please, can, can you make it in that? I can oh, make can. it. <laughs> I thought I might have to carry you in with that. <laughs> So it's, it's very frustrating having you here and you, you being quiet all day. Oh, yeah, no. If you feel the urge at any point... To burst into song. Just do oh, it. Please do, please. <laughs> It'd be very inspirational, wouldn't it? <laughs> Can I ask, what, is there anything you'd like from Katie? Anything you'd... Well, we'll have to decide where whereabouts we want you to look, I guess, yes. more or less. Can we give her something interesting on the wall for four hours, maybe? I'll, I'll like stand over there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Doing, I do quite a lot of mime. <laughs> We do something with the hands. This is sort of very defensive, you know? So if you could <laughs> well, sort of... You've married as many times as I have. You are very <laughs> defensive, let me assure you. The legs, is anybody Do you reckon you could look at something off? a bit further in the distance? I just want to get that distant look. Yeah. Yeah, I've got gotcha. you. Artists, I hope you've all settled in now because your challenge is about to begin. You have four hours to create your portraits. Good luck, and your time starts now. I'm just going to take a photo of you. This must feel really strange. For many artists, capturing not just a likeness, but a sense of character, begins with the fine art of conversation. So, Leo, do you use a grid to get the likeness? Yes, just faster, I guess. Yeah. It's not the most fun, I don't think. It's the same way in the old days, I suppose, an artist would have used calipers and a ruler and 
Canaletto did all right, didn't he, with his camera obscura? Yeah, you'll he see was... everything upside down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leon Nagado is a professional artist living in London. From magazine art direction to fashion design, her career has always been creative. She even has a master's in fine art and a PhD in typography. At 63 by 85 millimetres, her self-portrait is the smallest submission we've ever had. This is uh, 10, 20 times bigger than your this submission? This is ginormous. <laughs> I don't know, I was comparing to that one, yes. What are the different challenges doing something absolutely tiny to working on a bigger scale? How do you, do you think about it in a totally different way? Well, I, I don't know uh, if I'm doing the cleverest choice of all, uh, but, you know, I think Dave has a big personality, yeah. so I think uh, to reduce him to a smaller size would, would have to constrain it a mm -hmm. little bit, so mm -hmm. I wanted to give space for some of the flow, and I'm loving the, the flames on yeah. his back, mm -hmm. very Harley Davidson. He's yeah. very good. Yeah. I hadn't spotted that, absolutely. Yeah. Where did you grow up? I was born in Trinidad. There's a particular part, though, in Trinidad called Diego Martin or Diego Martin, but it's very lush, a lot of beaches. OK, so sea. <laughs> yes, yeah. a lot of sea. Sounds magical. <laughs> Professional artist Claire Faulkner lives in a remote part of Donegal. Not a huge fan of technology, instead of referencing photographs for her paintings, she prefers to rely on memory, observation, and imagination. Noticed you jumped around the other side to catch her. I was asking where she was from because I might try and incorporate a little bit of something into the background if at all I have time. So that symbolism is quite important to you because your your self portrait's clearly loaded with it. So. Yeah. But I haven't a clue what it's going to look like. Well, you know, it looks a bit like a little Leonardo drawing. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it really, really does. Whether acrylic oil or watercolour. There's a certain freedom for an artist who uses paint, but for a dry point etching that will be printed, the portrait must first be scratched onto a metal plate, a process that requires precision and patience. I've gone in with a scribe, and um, I'm gradually building up tone, starting off with lighter surfaces. It's a shallower mark, so there's less ink that goes into it, and then I'll build up to the, the real darks. A printmaking graduate, Stephen Tew is an amateur artist who lives with his family in Norfolk and works for the family business, a flower bulb wholesalers. He does also paint, but says he particularly enjoys the suspense involved in printmaking. There is a theatrical element to it, is in that it's kind of nothing, yeah. it's nothing, and then da -da. It's got to be revealed. When you peel back the paper from the press or what have you, it's, it's always great to see a print, or oh, horrifying. Well, I think it must be quite a reveal for you, yeah. because you can't be absolutely no, certain. No, you can't. When I first came over, it looked a bit more like Rick Waitman, but now I've settled down and realised I'm looking at shadow and stuff. Yeah, rather than, it's um, very hard to tell. than white beard. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Katie in there, definitely. I can also see me if I stand <laughs> in the right <laughs> position. The artists have been working for almost one hour. At the moment, it's the construction phase. Kind of just cracking on and trying to be not too critical of myself and to look out for some happy accidents. You're obviously trying to get a likeness, and oh my gosh, I'm so far away, this is so frustrating, come on. The whole situation is quite unifying, like we're all going through it together. Nobody seems 100% confident, but that's just artists, isn't it? Here at the Wallace Collection, singer Katie Kassoon, hairy biker Dave Myers, and musician Rick Waitman have been sitting for our artists for just over an hour. While some are etching and sketching, when it comes to portraiture, one prefers the stuff of the old masters. I really like oils. Part of the amazing thing about it is that there are so many different effects that you can do. 
I think it's a terrific medium. There's nothing else like it. It's paint. Originally from Toronto, amateur artist Ross McCauley works at Glasgow University Bookshop, but paints in his studio every night and at weekends. In his self-portrait, he used cool colours to capture the fact that his old flat was so cold, he always had to wear a coat. Ross, within 10 minutes of you having begun, you'd sketched out your portrait in such beautiful strokes, just like some unfinished master would have left a canvas, and I admired it so much. I, I just thought, stop now. <laughs> and you'd only it done could, 20 it could be done. But you've done it in a very loose and vital way, rather than being yeah. sort of painstaking about it. Is this well, how you usually start? It is. When I'm doing life drawing, I try to draw the same way, kind of with, with the whole arm, and try and make big sweeping gestures on a great big piece of paper. So I've got, I've got practice doing that. It's looking good, though. Thank you. While some artists draw their inspiration from the old masters, others are influenced by contemporary culture. I quite like capturing a kind of cinematic quality about a portrait. I think there's this kind of taboo that, um, that film, photography and painting shouldn't intersect, but I disagree actually, and um, that's something that I try and capture within my painting. Like, I want them to look like a still out of a film. Since leaving Canterbury Art School, Liam Dickinson works the 5 a.m. shift at his local Tesco and paints in the afternoon at home in Chorley. His self-portrait combines the light and focus of photos taken of Liam in his front room with that of Manchester streets at night. I heard that you learned to draw by sort of yes. frame freezing Disney films. That's true. I used to have the, all, the, all the videos and um, I started with Aladdin in particular and I used to I put it on and then I would just pause each frame, draw it. On video? Yeah, I used to even write the dialogue underneath. So okay. it was almost like a storyboard. I've got books that are about this big. Have you? Well, I suppose if you flick them through, if you've drawn them... <laughs> yeah, it's something, it's there or thereabouts. I really want to put in the other side of that moustache. Oh, I'm saving that. Oh, that's so tantalising. Like yeah. We all know Dave from television. Yes. Very vivid personality he is. But what about him as a sitter? Well, it's interesting, he's just transformed himself into... Uh, it, it reminds me of Van Dyke, the self-portrait with the sort of uh, curled moustache. Do you think he's a bit of a dandy? I don't know whether he would... Yes, I think he absolutely is. I... The way his hair sits on his shoulder... It's wonderful, It is. He? He's got this beautiful emerald-coloured suit, which I think he's taken from his uh, love of pre-Raphaelite painting. It's perfect. You like it? Yes, very good. To me, like he'd be the ideal face to paint. He has got a fantastic head, but there is still lots of complexities. Rick's got particularly fine, fair hair and uh, a fair beard. And how do you deal with all that paleness in a way and still oh, give it, still give it a solidity? Yeah, stop him sort of drifting away into the uh... into paleness. Yeah. Definitely. She's got a very smiley face, yeah. and her face isn't ever really in, in relaxed mm. mode. Yeah, I mean, I always think it must be much easier to paint someone whose face goes down, because a painting can be quite immediately strong, with a bit of a mildly grim face. When someone's quite positive, you have to work a bit harder, I think, to keep that sense of liveliness in your painting. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do your hands, so if you, just, just the way they are. Oh, okay. Yeah. You still haven't looked at any of them? Nope. Wow. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I really want to. <laughs> David Caldwell is a professional artist who paints portraits, landscapes and still life. After graduating from Glasgow School of Art, he spent two years studying at the Royal Drawing School. His submission includes a small portrait of Vincent van Gogh, whom David's often told he resembles. Well, I hope he's a bit happier. Do you know when you arrived today you wanted to give us a sense of her in the chair with the background, you know, getting her dress exactly as it is? Yeah, and it's not just about the, the features of the face, it's yeah. about creating a, a space and a believable person. I like trying to work with the whole image, you know, mm. using the, the dress as an excuse for rhythm and pattern mm. and the hair as well, you know, the way it all sort of flows. Yeah. 
very frustrating doing very light hair because I'm using watercolour as well. It's harder to get lighter colours in because there's no strength to a watercolour white. Amateur artist Callie Ann Healy lives in South Wales. Having studied creative writing with the Open University, she now works as a retail auditor. But she's also writing a book of poems for children which she plans to illustrate. She's the only one of today's artists using watercolour. I like that often when you speak to the artist, they say, yeah, I'm, I'm very influenced by Degas or um, I Renoir. Gonna, I know what you're going to say. Yeah. Yours was Marilyn Manson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I really liked his music and um, he did watercolour paintings. I'm so. not astonished to discover that Marilyn Manson painted, but the fact that he used watercolour. But you can get watercolour looking really miserable, see, if you... If you tip this up, everything looks like it's crying. Yes, so. well, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think Oscar Wilde said, by the time you're 40, you have the face that you deserve. And I want to try and get that lived-in face. Connor Walton is from Donegal in Ireland. An established portrait artist, he also paints still life and landscapes, and his work has been exhibited internationally. He took part in one of the heats of Portrait Artist of the Year 2014. Often in the past, I've suggested that some artists really sort of almost create a form of a self-portrait when they're portraying someone else, but I have never, ever felt it as closely as I do here. Well, maybe there's always an element of narcissism in painting, you know, you're always so deeply involved with it and the end result is a, is a picture and you're in it in some sense. The artists have just over two hours of their challenge left. There's a lot happened quite quickly this morning. There should be time for some of them to develop. You know, maybe I'll see some of the set or some sort of unusual take on it. Something more than a portrait, I guess, is what I'm looking for. I want to be told a story. I'm starting to put a few elements in which I think, um, perhaps will remind Kate of home. I'm just putting the background in now. It'd be such a shame to not include it, because it is quite remarkable. Uh, the challenge now is to make sure that things aren't kind of growing out of his head. It took a while to, to get going, just to get my rhythm, but um, it's going quite well so far. I mean, I'm just trying to get the face in more than anything. It's looking a little bit salmon. So, <laughs> it might be better in half hour. We'll see. Here at the Wallace Collection, artists have been painting musician Rick Wakeman, hairy biker Dave Myers, and singer Katie Kassoon for two hours. But at this point, do the judges have any favourites? So we're at the halfway stage. Let's, uh, let's consider the people who are painting Rick. What about Ross's painting? I, I think he's probably the least close to the likeness of Rick. I'm wondering whether it's going to sort of emerge yeah. more. The nose, you're just about to say the nose isn't quite right. No, it's not right, but there's something about the, mm. I don't know, something about the nose that is very Rick, but it doesn't look like him. But it might be because this is the kind of face that comes together right at the last minute. Well, this is the nature of the halfway chat. Some painters, they, they don't give you the magic until the last yeah, throw of the dice. Yeah, keep us waiting. So, um, in Katie's um, section... Claire's quietly working her magic. I'm only sorry that the really lovely drawing that she had early on has now disappeared. I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens with Stevens. Mm. It's the kind of thing that we are really going to be left for the last half an hour to work Absolutely. out if he knows what he's doing, because what you're really seeing is preparatory work. Now, let's consider the people who are painting Dave Myers. You know, we talk a lot about getting the spirit. Mm. I think Liam got Absolutely. what I feel he is. He doesn't yeah. have one of those faces that when it's resting kind of goes down. It mm. stays up, and he's picked up on that. Liam's looks interesting. 
very um, delicate bit of drawing, and now it's very sort of atmospheric. I don't know where it's going. When she started today, she didn't know if she was going to do a miniature or a large or what kind of style she was going to use. She really is an artist yeah. that wants to tell a story. And I feel like there's a few people like that today. So we're starting to get sort of sets, yeah. bit of narrative, bit of storytelling. I think we could conjure up some quite weird and wonderful things. One of the things I'm not going to do is to have a little sneaky look. I hate people coming to the studio when I'm working, when we're doing music, especially if it's an orchestral session, because you're bound to get somebody to go, well, I, I can't hear the French horns. You know, we haven't done the French horns yet. And you think, well, why don't you just listen to it when it's finished? I think one of the great joys of any artist is seeing something for the first time. So I'm deliberately not having a sneaky look. I've got um, Dave this side, and he's very serious and, and everything, you know, and then there's um, Claire, who we've, we've talked about all different things. And then we've got uh, Steve, um, who's using a different technique all, to, all together, you know, with the, with the print and everything. And I'm curious, I want to see how that turns out. Do you know what was amazing when I came in here? The first thing that struck me was the smell. The smell of the oils, the, the turpentine, the liquid, the, the, the various elements of painting are what was so familiar to me. But I kind of lost my passion for painting. And I think once that passion's gone, then the paintings that I were doing were just wallpaper. They didn't have what I am hoping as artists here have, which is something a little bit special. But to achieve something special, things sometimes have to get messy. My vision of it is to work with uh, something that's really dynamic and colourful and, uh, and, and free. Of course, uh, Dave is the, is the inspiration. He's my colour palette. Uh, I'm not inventing anything. I'm, I'm, I'm just empathising some bits. Hi, Ross. You are actually tackling the background. How important was it to you to have that there? Well, I was sort of going forwards with it, not having it there, and it was just a sort of, it was just a sort of background brown for ages, but it, uh, it was looking kind of bare, like his head was there, and I was happy with his head, but I think it needed some, some life and some energy to it. I agree so. with you. I think it's shifted the lightness as well, in a way. I, I think, think it's it has. sort of given that depth. I think that was a right choice. I was wrestling with that. All today's artists have seen their portrait evolve with every brush mark, but Stephen will only know if his etching shows any resemblance to Katie once it's been printed. Without a proper press, Stephen has to ink up the plate and transfer the ink to the paper by compressing weights with a clamp along the length of the portrait. So down there is Katie Kassoon waiting to come out. Yes. Oh, please don't drop it. Okay. I am a little bit anxious now. OK. Ah. There we go. It's good. You happy? Uh, yeah. There's a quality to it which it's hard to describe, but I can imagine leafing through an old book in a second-hand bookshop and coming across this looking exactly like that. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I think that's all right, actually. There is just half an hour to go before the judges will decide which artist will take a place in the semi-final. I'm going to try and get the outfit in, but again, I think it'll be quite lucky. It's uh, just about coming together. Looking forward to just getting finished. I'm, I'm, I'm flagging a bit now, if I'm honest. <laughs> I don't know, it's the last flourish. I need to think about a way to, to finish it, like, like a punchline, I need a punchline.
Here at the Wallace Collection, artists are in the final throes of their challenge to paint singer Katie Kassoon, musician Rick Wakeman, and hairy biker Dave Myers. And they must decide whether to risk more meddling or leave well alone. I suppose you, you could continue painting, working on a piece until, until you die, until the end of time. There has to be a point where you're kind of just content with what you've got and it's resolved. Artists, there are five minutes remaining. You're going to get every second out of this, I, I can will. see. Yeah. <laughs> five minutes. When I choose to paint earrings, what's that about? It's uh, just about coming together. I'm just adding a few final flourishes. Artists, your time is up. Please put down your materials and stand away from your easels. Oh, no. After observing the artist's hard at work over the last four hours, our sitters can at last see the fruits of their labour and choose their favourite portrait to keep. Artists, would you please turn your easels? Oh, wow. They're all me, aren't they? Every one of them. It I know would have been really weird if one of them had been Sir Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> it's quite flattering, really. Thank you very much. But, but it's, it's got the look. Sometimes I'm thinking about what to cook, where to go next. It's a wonderful painting. See, now that looks like me. You know, when the cameras have stopped. Yes. And I can be myself, and I'm going, she got the pub kingy. It's very honest. Wow, I love that explosion of colour and vitality. You know, I have been known on occasion to have a bit of humph. <laughs> and um, I love it. So, Dave, I'm going to have to ask you to choose the painting that you spend the rest of your life with. I think I'd like to take Liam's. Wow. Gosh, they are different too, aren't they? They're, they're all different, but they're brilliant. all true. They are. They're all an, an ageing rock and roll pensioner. <laughs> that, is, that is brilliant. The detail on that is, I must iron my shirt. This is absolutely fantastic. See, you've captured that's a, that's a different me. That's really good. That is really clever. I love what you've done with the background there. That is, that is really good. I felt, ah, oh, th this is so almost impossible. I mean, uh, and tomorrow we'll do, I'm going to go with you, Ross. Ah, perfect. Different. So different, aren't they? <laughs> wow. Well, I kept trying to not to smile. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's good because it's one of those Mona Lisa smiles that just, <laughs> just whispers across your face. <laughs> I like that it set you up in a, in a tropical eye. In island. a tropical eye. <laughs> That's the conversation that we had. Oh, OK. I can smell the papaya. <laughs> and this is the etching. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's quite a moment there when it's pressed and then the... Yes, I, I mean, that's a lot of work too, isn't it? To, so to... we now reach that moment where you must choose the one which you take home. OK. I think I'm going to go with Dave's. With such a rich variety of styles to choose from, 
The judges narrow down their selection before they decide on their final choice. This is a little gem. I don't think it's Katie, but it's I very beautiful. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I, th I think the eyes work, it's the lips that didn't work for me. But, I mean, it's a fascinating process. I didn't quite get the likeness, and obviously I'm going to be a perfectionist about things, but uh, I think anyone would be the same, really. I think she talked to Katie a lot about her childhood and where she grew up, and I think she felt she wanted to incorporate it into the picture, and it has that sort of illustrative feeling to it. She loves her work clearly to be full of symbolism, and I imagine that what happened today was it was such a controlled environment that she couldn't yes. find that freedom that she likes within herself. Mm. I was watching Ross paint this, and I was thinking, this is very rough, and I thought, is he going to refine it at any point? And the moment Rick left, I suddenly realised he'd caught him mm. in his essence. Mm. But it was difficult to watch because it was so in his head and there was a process he had to go through. Mm. You know, yeah. it was an ugly mm. painting all day and then he just kept adding just the right amount of information. We had a, an amazing couple of artists, so uh, I'm, I'm very thrilled that Rick, Rick chose mine. It feels like we've got the whole package here nearly. You know, he's caught the mischievousness. It's a great likeness. The quirky moments, the glasses are treated beautifully, the sparkly eyes. I mean, I, I really like this painting, and I think a lot of people will like this because it does have that lovely, warm energy of, mm -hmm. of Dave. But what really irritates me is yeah. the beard, why everything has got to be painted with the same brush mark. And it's one of those aberrations I know for myself as a painter. Otherwise, it's a really <laughs> good painting, so I'm kind of torn. Having um, picked Leah from her submission and the tiny self it, this definitely wasn't what I was expecting. She really has just responded to the moment and who was sitting. I love its colourfulness yeah. and its playfulness. She's really tried to get the character to come out as much as anything else. I would never have pictured what I've done, but I wanted to do something different, something fresh uh, for Dave. And um, yeah, I think it worked out really, really, really well. But there's only room for three on the shortlist. That's a good spread, isn't it? It's great. I think they're brilliant, actually. That's looking better now. Much. To it. But for me, I'm torn between which of those two we take into the last three. Yeah. I'm headed this way with Kathleen to these three. OK. Final three? Final yeah. three, yeah. OK, great. But which three have they chosen? The first artist is... Liam Dickinson. <laughs> the second artist is Leah Nagado. And the third artist is Ross McCauley. <laughs> Commiserations to those who didn't quite make it, but you all did superb work as well, and we've enjoyed it very much. Absolutely. Well done. I feel all right about that. I kind of guessed as much, but I'm, I'm pleased I came today. It's a good experience. Uh, story to tell the boys. I'm happy. Six portraits, five men, one woman, and she's only two inches high. <laughs> she holds her own there, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. So I really fell for this, and I thought you guys... I thought maybe you hadn't. Interestingly, we've found that we have a feeling about a painting, we're not certain about it, and we pull them out and put them next to other paintings. It seems to clarify mm. their strengths or their weaknesses, and this certainly happened with this one, where suddenly Dave, as a kind of psychedelic wizard, mm, yeah. <laughs> has actually worked very well. She's the kind of artist you think, what is she going to do? I mean, she's clearly very talented and she's so yeah. creative. I think our problem here is that it's a competition, we're going to go to the semi-final and then to the final. It's a big prize at stake. 
I don't know, it's a bit alarming not having any sense. I think there is a question that she's going to have to ask herself is, is to whether she's falling into the illustrations or whether she's going to stick more with the painterly side of things. I want it to be risky, but maybe not that risky. Uh, I, I don't know, I think um, I got a little bit carried away. Uh, I was too much in the moment, maybe. So what about Liam? I still think that is one of the strongest submissions we've had, I think. Mm. It's just, yeah. I can't stop looking at it, so it takes fair. me on this journey. I found today he's done very well. I have question marks about certain brush marks. You know, the beard is sort of falling apart in a kind of mosaic, digitalised pattern. And in his self-portrait, he's got those marks, but there's a better rhythm to it. Yeah, I think it's also difficult with artists that work in this photorealist style because it sort of feels slightly as if it's almost sort of slavish copying and you wonder where the, the creativity of the artist's coming, even mm. though they're obviously very creative if they can create something that's such an obvious likeness. It doesn't just look like Dave. I think it feels like Dave. It has Dave's sort of <laughs> kindness mm. about no, it. it does. Yeah. But it looks like the beard later refused to take part in the programme, <laughs> so it had to be pixelated. <laughs> <laughs> but my goal at the beginning of the day was, oh, let's hope the sitter takes my portrait on. Uh, and he did. And then uh, now I'm in the top three, so um, yeah, dizzy heights, but um, we'll see. Right, what about Ross? I loved Ross's submission. It immediately tells you a story. And I, I thought it was excellent that he was able to take his time today. It looked really sketchy early on. It looked a bit ugly, but it was a process he had to go through. And he just started to refine it in the afternoon and pull the whole thing together. Rick's monumentality comes yeah. across. And it became really apparent once Rick had left the stage. I felt it had the scent of Rick <laughs> in it. <laughs> what I like very much, too, is the relationship to the background. I think it actually helps the reality of Rick's face because there was a problem slightly with the profile and the minute the background went in it helped push him forward yeah. so you did get that depth. I think it's a marvellous crop of pictures. Yeah, it's been a good Terrific. day. The other pictures are really good. They're really good pictures. <laughs> it's, it's, it could be anybody's game. I'm, I'm just happy to, to, to be at this point. Leah, Liam, Ross. You've all done incredibly well, but only one can go through to the semi-finals and the judges have made the decision. The artists that they have chosen captured absolutely the energy and essence of their sitter. And that artist is... Ross McCauley. Oh, it's amazing. It's truly amazing. It's, it's, there are so many incredible artists and so many amazing pictures. I, it, could have been, it could have been anybody, so I feel very... I feel thrilled. I think the judges made a good choice. Ross was a, a worthy winner. Um, I didn't really even expect to get into the top three, so, yeah, all in all, it's been a pretty successful day, even if I'm not going any further. I think Ross' painting was brilliant, and uh, I really like uh, how fresh it was, and it looks yeah, really amazing. Portraits have a very special place in my heart, so I, uh, I'm glad I nailed it down this time. Now I have to, uh, I have to do it again, don't I?